Imagine how terrible the world would be without Command C and Command V. What I'm saying is that there's just as much Command C, Command Vs that you don't know about, which can save you just as much as time, but you're not using them. And I'm here to change that. I don't want your money. This is totally for free. If it's not working out for you, you schedule a call with me and I show you customized efficiency hacks for exactly the work you're doing. It's quarantine time, guys and girls, so let's share our knowledge. Here's an example. It happens so many times that, let's say, you have a credit card number like uh, this one and you want to paste it into your phone. So I'm copying it and now mentally I would go to my phone and then do something to paste it, but this was not possible, but well, now it is. So let's show you my phone now. Um, here's the notes. So all I have to do now is press this and I do paste and there you see the credit card number, which I just copied. Wanna see it again? Well, let's say um, we put high internet here. Copy it, Command C, go to my phone and paste, oops, paste, hi, internet. So Now I will show you plenty of those tricks in the next couple of minutes, but first let's talk about the mindset. Imagine you're a carpenter. If you're a carpenter, at least in Germany, you have to do a three to four year carpenter apprenticeship program. During that program, you learn how to use your tools. You did not just grab the table saw or the drill press and use it for eight hours a day as we are now doing it with a computer. No, somebody was there and showed you how to use it and you practiced and you practiced and you practiced and somebody supervised you while using it. What's interesting is that we sit in front of a computer many hours per day and no one showed us to use the computer properly, right? We were never supervised. It's just sort of assumed that we know how to use it. But we should be like this carpenter. It doesn't take three years. It takes maybe a day or two or a weekend and now is a perfect time for that. And then you can be an expert computer user and really save a lot of time during your day. My name is Fabian. I ran a tech company for the last six years and uh, from literally everywhere, from jungles, from deserts, from beaches, you name it. In 2015, I drove um, an old clunky car with my two work colleagues from Argentina to Colombia and we were a year in that car um, delivering services for customers like Virgin Atlantic, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Twitter. And during those trips, you know, um, we were just forced to learn how to work in all sorts of places in the most efficient way. So since then, I was invited to many events and to give talks about efficiency and um, how to use the computer in a better way. And companies even invited me to look over the shoulders of their employees to teach them these kind of efficiency hacks. And uh, it really made a big difference. All right, let's bring you one step closer to be that carpenter who knows her tools. And if you want to follow me on the social media, you can go to the go between on Instagram or just go to my website, fireventertech.com. So I'm looking here at Keynote and I want to switch to Chrome. How do you do that? The regular computer user um, would probably put their hand to the mouse or to the trackpad and then go down here and, you know, select Chrome and click it. So this was how many steps? Putting hand to trackpad, using the trackpad, clicking, and then you're there. Now, why not just do like this? This is easier, right? It's, it's alt tap. If you see the computer keyboard here, you know, eventually, this is not a computer keyboard anymore. This is like an instrument. It becomes an instrument where you intuitively use the keyboard, um, not really thinking about anymore where you put your hands. So as you can see, my command button is pretty messed up. That's because I use it so much. So alt tap is that keyboard, right? So you do command with your thumb and then this with any other finger and then you switch between applications. This is very easy and very fast and saves you a lot of time. Easy stuff. All right, since we're in Chrome already, let's um, look at this. Uh, here on the top, you can see we have the browser tabs, right? Tabs. The tab starts with a T. So if you do Command T, you will open a new tab. And now you can go to, let's say, Facebook, all right? So here I am at Facebook. Okay, now um, let's close that tab. You could either take the mouse and click here, but you could also do Command W. And with Command W, you close the tab that is currently active. Now, let's say I close a tab that I didn't really want to close. You could do Command Shift T and the last tab that you just closed will open. This is super useful. You can just do that again and again and the last tabs in the chronological order as you open, uh, close them will open again. So this is really cool. 
and um, saves a lot of time when you when you lost some tabs. Here I'm in Google Calendar. Let's say I want to print this. I would never do that, but let's just do it. So here I go, uh, save as PDF, save, and now I get the PDF and I can choose where to put it. So I'm going to my um, desktop, which should be, so here it is. So I'm saving this now. Okay, now the document should be on my desktop. So how do I get there? This is where crazy corners come into play. I have a crazy corner set up in the bottom left corner of my screen. So if I sort of throw the mouse cursor in here, then it uh, moves all the windows away and I have free access to my desktop and here goes the PDF I just created so I can now open it or do whatever with it, copy and paste it somewhere or move it into some other folder. Nice, huh? To set this up you just, you know, and this is general good advice, you, you never have to, like basically every time you move your hand to the trackpad, it's not ideal. There must be a better way. Like moving your hand to your trackpad is kind of the carpenter using a screwdriver when he has an electric screwdriver. So you can just go, you know, the regular macOS user would probably go here to settings and then um, check where would be the crazy corners. Now what you can do is you just do a spotlight, you know, command space that should open your spotlight. Um, but we will soon replace this with alpha dub. And then you just do, let's say, pref and it automatically auto completes the system preferences. And here I am in the search box, so I can just search for corners. Hot corners is what I want. Here I am in hot corners and I can now click here on hot corners. And you can see if I put the mouse cursor to the left bottom, I want the desktop to show. You can set up other corners, uh, makes a lot of things much easier. All right, for the next um, shortcuts, you need Alfred App. Alfred App is for free. You can download it for free. Only for the power pack, you need to buy the full version. I think it's 25 bucks, but you don't need this for most of the things that I'm showing here. Here we see a bunch of windows, right? They're floating around there. Now, I don't want that. I want. I want this window to the left and I want this window to the right and I want them to fill up half of the screen. So I could now take them and put them here and move them around and resize them and whatnot. But with Alfred Up, I just have a shortcut. One is called L. It says, it says it's called resize window left half. There it goes. It's on the left half. This one I want to the right. So I do R. There you go. You know, I could do this with Chrome too. So remember, command tab to switch to Chrome. Here I am now. I want to have my Chrome on the left side. So I just do L. And uh, that goes. Oh, I did right. Yeah. So here I have my Chrome perfectly resized to the half of the screen. Now, if I want to have this full screen, I just do F for full screen. There you go. All right. So here comes a um, couple of neat tricks with Alfred App. Um, so remember that at some point I copy and pasted a serial number, and after that I copy and pasted high internet. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Let's make this bigger. In all applications, making something bigger is command plus. So here we have it bigger, you know, and I can now copy the one, I copy the two, I copy the three, I copy the four, I copy the five. Now if I do a paste, what will come out? Yeah, a five, obviously. Now let's say I want to paste something that happens to me all the time. Let's say I want to paste something that I copy and pasted many, you know, copy and pastes ago. How do I do that? I can only paste the five, but well, what about the other things? Well, with Alfred App, you just do Command Alt C, and here you go. Here you have the history of the stuff that you copy and pasted um, before. So as you can see here, we have the serial number, and as you can see here, we have the high internet that I used before, and here we have the five, four, three, two, one. You can set this up that it saves the copy and paste history of the last 400 dates if you want and the cool thing is you can search in it So if you copy and paste something yesterday, and it's not in this list anymore You just put some letters of the thing that you copy and pasted that you remember and it will come up and you can just paste it here Magic, right? So here's something else What I'm showing you now is the easiest thing you can do with Alfred App, which is an amazing time saver It's called text snippets being a traveler, I needed my passport number like nearly every day every time you check into a hotel or whatnot so you can either run around with your passport and then take it out and look at it, but your passport would be just used up. You can have a picture of your passport on your phone and put it into your favorites and then look at that. Maybe you have your picture of your passport in Evernote, but that takes a lot of time, you know? Why not have your passport number on the tip of your fingers? So all I do now is I open Alfred app and I put P-A-S-S. -S. See, you don't have to remember those snippets and how they're called because it auto-completes. P-A-S, okay, passport new details, here you go. My passport number, date of issue, 
date of expiry. Many times I need to tell people how to get to my place in Berlin, let's say. Couch surface or whatnot. So I could just do a text snippet and I call it my direction. I have it set it up. Here, this is how you get to my place. This is how, which metro you have to take. And here's my number in case you want to call me. Easy, right? I have this for everything. My phone number in Chile, my phone number in Ecuador, my phone number in uh, Germany, and so on. How many times do you have to provide your phone number? And you know, who remembers those things? Now this is no rocket science. To set this stuff up, you just go into outfit app and then you go to snippets and now you can create um, your text snippet. So for example, if I wanna have a text snippet with my phone number, uh, I would just call it your phone number, let's say. And um, now, now I um, put my phone number here. So this is my phone number, let's say, safe. Now, if I am in some sort of text ed editor, I just have to put your, it auto completes to your phone number and there you go. This is the number. That's how easy it is to set up a text snippet. This is the thing about mindset, you know, like every time you observe yourself doing something again and again in a repetitive way, think about how can I use a shortcut or how can I use Alfred Up or whatever you use to mm, compress this repetitive task into something that just take, takes me a second. Coming up with text snippets is one of those things you can do to, um, to, to do that. All right, so what's amazing about Alfred Up is that it has integrations with all sorts of softwares that you are using. Now, currently, I'm using an Evernote, um, which I created to have sort of an outline about the shortcuts and things that I wanna talk about. Um, and how would I find this Evernote? I could go to Evernote and then use the search of Evernote and I probably would find it. But I know that the note is called something with shortcuts. Now Alfred Up has an integration with Evernote, so all I have to do is open Alfred Up. I do command space, Alfred Up opens, and now I do ENS, which stands, stands for Evernote search, and I put in um, shortcut. Now it takes a second, and now it shows me all the Evernotes that include the word shortcut. Now I click on shortcut video, and here I am. I have the show notes for this video, and it's really useful. You can even, um, if you have some text, you know, um, which um, you want to save as an Evernote, you can just copy and paste it. You do ENN, uh, a new note from text selection. I press enter, and a second later, you have a new note with the content of whatever you have marked here. Now, of course, you have individual needs and you use individual tools. What I'm saying is that Alfred app has an integration for whatever tool you use. Now, for example, I love languages and I like, I pretend to speak five, um, which is Spanish, Portuguese, English, French, and German. Now, let's say I'm, my, my French ain't that great. So let's say I'm talking to someone on Facebook or wherever in French. And I want to say, hey, um, should we meet at the Cemetière de Pierre Lachaise at six o'clock. But I forgot what should we meet means. Now, have a look here. So, I'm using a plugin, which is for language translation, uh, for Alfred Up, and it's pre-configured for five languages. So what I'm doing here is I start Alfred Up and I use a plugin, which I can activate by putting TR for translate. This is pre um, set up for the five languages I pretend to speak. And all I do now is to put the phrase in English. Should we meet around 6 p.m. Uh, at the Pierre Lachaise Cemetery? Question mark. As you can see, it shows me what this phrase means in the five languages that I try to speak. I have it here in Portuguese, I have it in Spanish, I have it in German, I have it in French. Now I want it in French. Now all I do, let's imagine I'm in Facebook, or in some sort of chat WhatsApp, I just press enter. And here goes my phrase. It's automating the clipboard. I just have to copy and paste it. And here we go. You know, it works for everything. Hey man, uh, wanna go to the supermarket around seven, question mark. And here it's in Portuguese. Hey, cara, que é o supermercado por volta de sete? So easy. It's amazing. It's not even that you. It's not only that you need the phrases to like copy and paste them somewhere. It's like 
sometimes you think, what does this mean in Spanish again? And then you just put it in in English and then you can see it in Spanish, but you also see it in French and Portuguese and whatever else you want to speak. So it constantly refreshes everything that you, um, all your language uh, capabilities. Let's talk about direct links. Doesn't it happen that there's certain web pages that you open over and over again? And it's already a good idea to, let's say, use bookmarks, but bookmarks takes a lot of time. You know, you have to click on bookmarks and you have to browse through your bookmarks and whatnot and uh, make many clicks. Um, so here's an example. Let's say Airbnb. Now I have, I have like two properties that I manage on Airbnb. And every time I want to go to the calendar where you block certain dates and um, put the prices for the individual days, it takes me so much time because, you know, like, the regular Mac user would go to the bar here, the menu, click on Chrome, and then probably even click on this plus, such a waste of time, and then go to Airbnb, um, you know, and now I have to find um, where the calendar is. So I'm going to like, you know, it's not here. I don't know where to go. Probably manage properties, and it takes a lot of time. You know, here I am, st still not seeing where the calendar is. So, would be a good idea to do, to do like Command F for find and search for calendar. Calendar, oh, here it goes, calendar. Okay, there you go. Here I am. Now let's say I close my Chrome. So I do Command Q, which stands for quit. So Chrome is closed now, there's no browser open now. And I want to go to the calendar dashboard of Airbnb. Now I set up a direct link for that. All I do now is Alfred up. Air, B, and it shows me all the links that I have set up for everything that's connected to LM, uh, to Airbnb. This is for a property called the Lustitzer Millhaus LMH. Hit enter, Chrome opens, and it goes automatically to the calendar. And I don't have to click around, I land exactly on this page that I want. Okay, so same thing with, with anything else. So. I, I open the Google Calendar so many times per day, I don't even want to type in something, I just do Command Shift K for calend calendar in German, and it opens my Google Calendar, right? Because I do this 10 times per day. These are just shortcuts to open direct links in your browser. So let me show you how to set this up, it's really easy. You go into the Alfred App Preferences and you go into Workflows, and, and now we want to create a direct link to some web page. So I go here, I say uh, I want a keyword trigger. So it's a keyword and we call this keyword uh, Open Zendesk. No argument required, Open Zendesk, save. So now I have it, here it goes, Open Zendesk, right? If I hit enter, nothing happens because we didn't set it up. What we want to set it up to is to open Zendesk.com, okay? So I copy and paste this URL, by the way, to jump into this field here, to the URL field, you just do Command L and you're here. You can just put it in another domain, Command L. So Zendesk.com, I, um, I copy and paste this and we go here and I create a new trigger. Uh, no, sorry, an action, uh, open URL, okay? So I paste the URL that I want to open here, save. Now if I do open Zendesk, nothing happens. Why? Because there's no connection. Now you take this and you connect it to this thing. And now I do open Zendesk. And a new tab opens with Zendesk. Isn't that magic? Now, of course, you can now create all sorts of actions here, like um, playing a song on Spotify, and then take this and connect it to playing a song on Spotify. So if you would do open Zendesk, it would play a song on Spotify. and. Uh, open Zendesk. So just let your imagination run free of the things you could do with this very easy intuitive graphical user interface to connect certain triggers like a hotkey, like a shortcut, like a keyword, like Open Zendesk to any action that you want. Now let's be a bit more advanced. If you use Zendesk you probably, you know, Zendesk has tickets and tickets have numbers. So let's say my colleague says, dude, you have to look at ticket 500 in our Zendesk. So what do I have to do? I have to go, I have to open a new tab and then I do like helpando.zendesk.com and I wanna, you know, and maybe probably slash agent to get to the agent interface of um, Zendesk. And now, okay, I want to go to ticket 500. So how can I do that? Well, probably I can use the search functionality here and type in 500 
and it would now jump to the ticket with the ID 500. How many steps was that? That was like opening the browser, typing in the URL, waiting until it loads, clicking on search, entering 500, press enter, six steps, lots of time, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Now, I do this so many times, like looking at specific tickets in Zendesk that I set up something which does it in one second. So I close Chrome again, and I do T500, T500, that's it, enter. Chrome opens and it goes directly to the ticket with the ID 500. I just saved six steps and probably 20 seconds. Now, let's see how this is being set up. Let's set it up ourselves. Okay, so I can take this URL, I can, I can take this URL now, right? And I can do the same as I did before. So I take this, I say copy and paste, command C, command V, and I take this, copy and paste, command C, command V. <clears throat> I can connect those two things already. Now here I put another URL. Um, I put the URL we just, we just used, which is this one with the ticket 500 here, right? Save. And here I call this uh, ticket in ticket in Zendesk, let's say. Okay. All right, save. Now what happens now if I do ticket in Zendesk? Let's see. Let's cross Chrome, and now I do ticket in Zendesk. Enter. Chrome opens and it goes automatically to the ticket with the ID 500 because that's the URL that we pasted. Now I don't always want to open the ticket with the ID 500. Let's say my colleague says open ticket with the ID 600. Let's close Chrome. Now I go here where the, I put the URL and I erase the 500 and I sort of um, replace it with this curly brackets and in here I put query. Okay. And now here in my hot, in my keyword, I say there's an argument required. An argument means that you put something after the ticket in Zendesk, safe. Now, if I do ticket in Zendesk, it doesn't let me. It doesn't let me press enter because it requires an argument. And the argument is the ticket ID. All right, 600. Um, Chrome opens, I end up on the URL, which ultimately has the 600 at the end. And here I'm looking at ticket ID 600. So yeah, be creative, Let use your imagination, what are the websites that you open all the time um, and then set up direct links to them, can help a lot. Now Alfred App comes with a lot of things pre-configured for people who use certain things all the time. So for example, let's say um, you want to search for a person on Facebook, all you do is start Alfred App, you put Facebook and now it suggests that, you know, search Facebook for someone like um, Facebook uh, Joe Rogan. Enter, bam. Facebook opens and it shows me all these Joe Rogans of the world. And I can click on it, add him as a friend. Oh, he's already run out of friends. What else? I can do Spotify, search Spotify for Eye of the Tiger. And then I can just play it, you know. You have a Spotify controller, so you could just like say Spotify, Eye of the Tiger, hit enter and it just plays Eye of the Tiger a second later. It's uh, pretty awesome. You have everything. LinkedIn, search LinkedIn for Tim Cook. There you go. LinkedIn automatically searches. You know, or just regular web search. Um, let's say you want to know what is the law of attraction. So I would just put law of attraction and now it automatically suggests um, to either search the law of attraction on Google or on Amazon or on Wikipedia. So I say look, look, Wikipedia and it opens the law of uh, attraction, which is uh, apparently a uh, philosophical concept in new thought I hope they actually say that it's probably pseudoscience and it is widely considered as a pseudoscience very good job Wikipedia other things you can do with Alfred up that save an immense amount of time calculations 34 plus 50 all right there it goes 100,000 million whatever divided by 3 there goes the answer now I can just press enter on that and I now paste this and I have the answer here, paste it and ready to use. So let's say you're in another country and you want to know how much uh, euros you get for 200,000 Colombian pesos. All you need to do is conf and then 200,000 
cop in euros and will tell you that it's 47.25 euros. It works for everything. Okay, I'm, I'm German, you know, I, I like kilometers. So uh, 10 kilometers in miles. Okay, that is 6.21 miles. You can use that for temperatures and for any units that you can think of. Very easy. I just go here, 6.2 one mild hit enter and if I go somewhere and paste then I have the 6.21 in my clipboard. Here's a bunch of other things that you can do with Outfit Up. So um, let's say you want to create a Google document which you want to share with a customer um, to you know look at the same document. You could either go to Chrome open drive google.com click on new document decide what kind of document like a spreadsheet or a word document or whatnot and then you could share it with a customer. Now, with Alfred App, you have integrations to all those services like Google Docs or whatnot. So all I need to do is denew, and it automatically tells me, what do you want? A new document, a spreadsheet, a presentation? I say, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Project Requirements. And if I would hit enter now, it would automatically create a new spreadsheet. When, and the title of that spreadsheet would be Microsoft Project Requirements. Done. Let's say you want to create a Google event um, because you agreed to meet at 6 p.m. in Mauer Park tomorrow with Diego. You know, I could now open Chrome, be in my calendar, look at tomorrow 6 p.m., click at 6 p.m., create an event, call the event Meet Diego, put the location to Mauer Park, and then invite Diego. Eight steps. All I need to do is Cal, meet Diego tomorrow at 6 p.m. in Mauer Park. Okay, it suggests automatically to create a new Google Calendar event. If I hit enter now, my Chrome pops up, a new event is created. It automatically takes 6 p.m. as the time. It takes Mauer Park at the location and it puts Meet Diego as the name of the event. And it automatically shares, invites Diego because I kind of set it up that way. Let me tell you a little story about how we came up with all these shortcuts. We came up with the shortcuts when we were driving with this old car from Argentina to Colombia. And there was many times where, let's say, we would um, enter the desert of Atacama because we were driving from Santiago de Chile to um, Lima in Peru. And um, whoever was driving would, would say, hey man, we're now entering the desert, so you have six hours of offline time. So send the emails now, right? Now, these six hours of offline time were a little bit like being trapped in an airplane where you can't really move too much and you don't have Wi-Fi. And if you are someone who is working, um, you might think, ah, I could now finish this work, but I don't have Wi-Fi, so maybe you don't know what to work on. But now there's a change of mindset, right? First of all, you have no distractions. Second, there's nothing to work on. And now you're like, have the laptop in front of you and you could now use this time to think about how you can improve the way you work. So for us those offline phases when we were driving through the desert were absolutely amazing in terms of how we improved our workflows and processes because now we had the time to think about what are the repetitive things that we do every day um, which we can somehow improve, right? And one thing that came up was calls. Calls are the worst thing if you're location independent or you're traveling in deserts or jungles because you need a stable Wi-Fi connection and you need to be at a specific place at a specific time. So calls suck. Um, but what sucks too is scheduling calls. Scheduling calls can take an immense amount of time, right? So here's an example. Let's say you have customers around the world. People are right, reaching out to you and they're like, hey Fabian, we need a call. So this, this could be it, right? Have a look. Like here's a guy called Dominic and he's like, Fabian, can we have a call so I can walk you through my requirements really quick? How does 2 p.m. sound? First email. Now I have no idea where this person is. They might be in PST, EST, Mountain Time. They might be in Melbourne, completely different time zone. I also have no idea where I am sometimes. So I have to come back with an email and say, hey, what time zone are you in? Now Dominic replies, third email, and goes like, we're based in San Francisco. So Pacific time, right? Now, in my mind, I have to go like, okay, where am I? Oh, I'm in Dakar, Senegal. Now, Dakar has one hour difference to Berlin. Berlin has nine hour difference to PST. And now I have to look at my calendar. I have to see when I'm free. I have to subtract like nine hours. And 
Ideally, I don't even give one option for having the call, I give three, because if I just give one, the customer might come back and say, can't do it. So I have to come back with an email now saying, okay, I could do Tuesday 9 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. or 12 or Wednesday 12 p.m. PST. Does any of this work for you? And now Dominic comes back and now we're like six emails. Yeah, Tuesday 11 a.m. PST works. Now I have to go into my calendar, go to Tuesday, at nine hours to 11, which I can't even do anymore because I use too many shortcuts. And then I have to create an event and I have to invite Dominic and whatnot. So we have like eight emails and uh, I have to create a Zoom meeting too and include the link and it's just a bunch of headache and wasted time. And if you do that three times per day, it just makes no sense, right? I mean, the philosophy behind this is only do what you're qualified for. Every one of us is overqualified to send and read e eight emails, do time zone calculations in the head and create calendar events. It's headache. We are overqualified to do this. There must be a better solution. The solution is some tool, Calendly. So what we're doing now is there's an email. The person is like, hey, we need a call. All I do now, and I'm using a text snippet for that, is this. Cal, bam. If you'd like to have a call, Feel free to pick a date and time that suits you here. I will automatically receive a, not a notification. So here you go. The customer gets this email. All the customer does is to click on this link. I do this with Alfred App, so I copy and pasted it, pasted in Alfred App, enter, Chrome opens. I'm on the link, all right? I'm the customer. Let's do this in an incognito Chrome window. By the way, opening Chrome incognito windows, you should know this. You go to File, New Incognito Window, but as you can see here, it suggests that you do Command Shift N. So I never, I never knew, use menus because you have to put your hand to the trackpad, which is always a bad sign. You just do Command Shift N, and now you can surf freely in the internet on pages that you don't want anybody to see. Anyway, um, let's paste this link here. There you go. I'm the customer now. The, we have two emails so far, and I show you that it will stay at this two emails and not at nine and no calculations and no anything. The customer is looking at this thing, right? This is synchronized with my Google Calendar. The customer only gets the chance to book dates and times that are available when, when I am available. So customer goes to 22nd of April, says um, at, let's say midnight. <laughs> and um, puts in the name, right? I am Diego Gomez. This is my email, also text snippet. Uh, what is this call about? Data migration. What is your Skype username? Diego.gomez098. And what's my landline number? Bam. Schedule event. Now the customer clicks on add to your calendar and it, it's automatically in the calendar of the customer, I don't even have to do that. If I go to my calendar, and I told you before, I have a shortcut for that, Command-Shift-K, and now I go to the 22nd of April, then you can see that on the 22nd of April, I have an event scheduled with Diego Gomez, and if I click on here, I can see that this call is about a data migration, the Skype name, and that's it. Done. We just saved nine emails, five, three minutes of calculations in our head, uh, and a bunch of headache, and basically outsourced it to the customer. But the customer, instead of sending five emails and checking her calendar, sent one email and clicked on a link, and that's it. So I'm not saying you can save a lot of time by using this. I'm saying observe yourself, how you use a computer and what things you do over the course of a day that repeat themselves and then find better ways to do them. This might not sound like much, but if you do this over and over again, then it is. If you look at my statistics of Alfred App and how many shortcuts of those I use per day, then you can see that I'm using 132 shortcuts of those per day. And if that says like 30 seconds, 132 times 30 seconds divided by 60, I already have more than an hour saved, okay? If you do that all the time, then 
eventually your command button will look like this. Yeah, so this was my command button after using these shortcuts for like five years. So here's an immensely essential thing to understand. This is not about the 10 or 20 seconds that you save when you use a shortcut only. It's about way more than that. Here's an example. Here's a super essential thing to understand. So, <clears throat> all right. All right, here's a super essential thing to understand. This is not about the five or 15 or 20 seconds that you save by using a shortcut compared to not using a shortcut and doing it manually. It's about way more than that. Here's an example. Let's say you're reading a book. So you're sitting here reading a book, you're very much into the story and into the, you know, the, you're in the flow of reading and now your phone rings and it's your friend, Diego, who's your flatmate and he wants to tell you that you urgently have to read the electricity counter so that you can later submit the counter to the electricity company because otherwise you pay too much or whatnot. Now it makes a major difference. If you put away your book and you go to your task manager, let's say Wunderlist or whatever task manager you use, and you open the task manager and you do like new task and you put in read the electricity counter, which took you 15 seconds, 20 seconds maybe. Or if I'm reading and I'm back from the call or the text message, let's say, and all I do now is WL, read the electricity counter. Hit enter and I keep reading. WL stands for Wunderlist, which is a to-do list of task manager that I use. And if I press enter, it's automatically in my to-dos. Now what's the difference? The first way was putting the book away and being out of the story for 25 seconds. In the second way, it took me just two seconds. The 25 seconds can mean that I lost the thread of the book, that I got out of the story. But two seconds will not rip me out of what I was doing. So there was a primary task, which was reading or coding or playing the guitar or whatnot. And there was a secondary task to note this down in my to-do list manager. If you're just being taken out from the primary task for like two seconds, it makes no big difference. I'm still, I still know what I read about. But if you ripped out of that task for like 20 or 30 seconds, it's a major difference. So that's about that. All right, let's bring this to an end. Um, what I showed you today was simple hacks and shortcuts to improve the way you work with a computer just like a carpenter uses um, his tools in the best way. But on a higher level, there's a mindset. And the mindset is to achieve your goals and tasks faster. What I'm saying is you can apply the same mindset to the offline world. So let's say you want to end up in the news uh, with whatever you have, your product, your your product, your idea, you just want to have news coverage or whatnot. And as you can see, when we did the strip in South America, we had big success. We were on all sorts of major um, TV stations and ended up in all sorts of newspapers and even got a TED talk. So that worked out really well for us. So if you want to have another video where I talk about how to sort of get anywhere you want or reach anything you want by using sort of a shortcut or some sort of hack then uh, let me know in the comments um, if you would like some help of setting up your own custom shortcuts let me know in the comments and uh, i send you a link so we can have a private call and i give you some advice of how to set up your own shortcuts so i hope this was helpful and that you have a good quarantine time wherever you are now is the best time to set up your shortcuts see ya